What's good, y'all? Welcome to another edition of Call Outs TV. This is your boy, John. Man, we got some breaking news, man. We got some breaking news. So there was 20 members of the YG gang that was arrested in the Bronx for multiple shootings. I just saw the press conference, man, on uh, Fox 5 News, man. Um, I'm definitely going to show that to y'all, man. Uh, you little young niggas out there, man, I was doing... That's drilling, that's actually doing the real drilling and spinning out here. And y'all putting that shit in y'all drill songs, man. Y'all better put that shit to an end, man. Because Mayor Adams and the NYPD, they're working collectively to take you young dudes down. I thought being that, you know, Mayor Adams, he, he had a sit-down meeting with Maino Fabio Foreign. I thought that he would kind of like, you know get a better understanding of the drill rappers and try to, you know, not go so hard and locking the youth up, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I always believe in giving the youth a fair shot. These young boys, man, they come from these urban environments where there's nothing to do. There's no programs. There's nothing like that to do. So I have no problem with the young boys expressing themselves on how they grew up, where they come from and shit like that. But when you start being too specific on the drill song about who you done killed, you know what I'm saying? What nigga done got killed that week, that, this, that, and the third, man? The feds is watching, man. And they coming for you little niggas, man. So y'all niggas got to tighten up out there, man. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, man. Like I said, man, there's been 20 members. I'm going to say it again. 20 YG members from the Bronx was arrested on multiple shootings. They even got the dudes that shot and killed that 20-year-old girl on Hull Avenue. Her name was Delia Vasquez, man. It's pouring and raining out here, man. I'm about to get in the crib. Y'all don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're going to have more content on the way. One defendant allegedly attempted to stab him when he fell to the ground. Rivera died of the gunshot wound to his back. Four defendants went to a Hall Avenue apartment and allegedly shot Delilah Vasquez, age 20, at close range in the forehead and left her to die. Four defendants, including one teen and other individuals, surrounded an 18-year-old CUNY prep student as he left school and they attempted to rob him. They allegedly attacked the student with multiple weapons, including a knife, and the victim was seriously injured and required emergency resuscitation and life-saving blood transfusions. Two of the defendants fired multiple shot, sh shots at their target on DeKalb Avenue, leaving three, not one, not two, three innocent bystanders injured. A 66-year-old woman, a 39-year-old man, and a 31-year-old man. All were injured in that incident. A total of 18 guns were seized in this investigation, including one which was a ghost gun, and you see the guns here. The 82 count indictment includes charges of conspiracy, murder, manslaughter, attempted murder, criminal possession of a weapon, reckless endangerment, assault, attempted assault, and grand larceny. Seven of the defendants have been arraigned and the others are waiting to be arraigned. Let's get into the case. So G-Side was a 10-month investigation addressing a violent gang, a blood set that falls under the YG umbrella. The case was initiated to combat violence, really the western area of the Bronx, uh, all around Fordham and Bedford Park, which was mentioned earlier, but also in and around Gun Hill Road, so it, it's far-reaching. We utilized our next level precision policing policies and address geography and the right subjects. You have to consider, even amongst gangs, there's very few shooters. These are the alphas. These are the, the individuals that really horrifically endanger the public. This is who we built this case around, as, as well as all the others. When you look at geography, last year versus the year prior, the same area of the Bronx experienced a 36% uptick in shootings. And when you look at this year, you're seeing the same trend, about 37% up year to date. So you're certainly see, seeing that we're in the right place. When we speak to our subjects, these are the trigger pulls. The very few individuals that make it uncomfortable and downright dangerous for all the great people in our community. Who without remorse carry firearms and just create an uncomfortable quality of life for everybody around them. 
the kind that only the worst of the worst can create. No true regard for anybody around them, and just to assist in painting a picture of our subjects, two specific subjects now in custody, uh, Don Juan Patterson and Omar Gibbs, historically have been arrested for possession of a firearm on six occasions between the two of them. In fact, when you look at our 20 subjects, on 26 occasions, again, historically, this group has been in possession of a firearm. I mean, it's, it's simple. Clearly, look at the table. No strangers to gunplay. These are the individuals who built this case around. Now, regarding the acts of violence, and we essentially see the same theme throughout this case, through all the incidents of violence, this gang conducted wolf pack-like searches throughout the investigation. What are they looking for? They're hunting opposing gang members. And once they locate a potential opposition, sometimes erroneously, as noted earlier, often six to upwards of 12 bad guys armed with multiple guns along with makeshift weapons would chase lone victims while firing shots, all the while while potential victims would run for their lives. Real scary thought. We've seen shots fired and attempted murder incidents throughout this case, really beyond belief. Examples of such, um, we had a nursing home on Gun Hill Road that ultimately takes a bullet through its door window. That incident actually occurred midday and elder, with elderly members in close proximity. Scary, scary stuff. We've also seen shots fi fired outside of schools during dismissal with young individuals, 10 or under, with backpacks running for cover. Now we all know fired bullets have no names. A theme we've so tragically seen far too many times. By the grace of God, with these incidents, nobody was hit, but we have seen unintended hit throughout this case as well. We had a 26-year-old male victim really minding his own business, never been arrested before, suddenly shot by a spray bullet. That bullet that was fired was one of three guns at that scene. That incident also noteworthy in close proximity of a Bronx church. Another incident noted earlier, but it bears repeating, last summer in June, a 66-year-old female shot in the leg. One of three individuals shot during that incident, and she was simply conversing with friends. We did see um, a, light, a light lost. A promising young woman in Delia Vasquez, really a baby in the world of life at 20 years old, whose life suddenly became halted. Why? The ruthless violence of this gang. I can't stress it enough. Now let's speak to this gang as a whole. These subjects woke up every single day just to live a life exclusively to benefit their gang. The gang used drills, dr drill raps to call out opposing members, predominantly Crips, but when we look at their homemade videos, what we see prominently over and over again is these subjects are observed in possession of firearms. What are they doing? Challenging their ops to engage in violence, mocking those that are deceased, all at the hands of gun violence, just so tremendously insulting. The gang even brags and refers to their past shootings and acts of violence, again, all for the benefit of the gang. In all 20 subjects now in custody as a result of our investigation, these subjects lived and affected our Bronx neighborhoods. Now these same individuals who really showed little or no remorse at all and carelessly fired guns and terrorized our neighborhoods are now behind bars. Also just want to note that this is one of the many takedowns our gun uh, suppression team has initiated. The cases that we initiate really are so far reaching, affecting, and protecting the entire city. And the best part is, there's a lot more to come. With that being said, to all of our gangbangers out there, if you are the worst of the worst, if you recklessly engage in gun violence and endanger our communities, if you're one of those precious few that make daily life of our great people uncomfortable, dangerous, and really feel no remorse about it, I suggest you shake up, shape up, or we may see you soon. A lot of kudos to go around that made this happen. Our Bronx investigative partners out there, uh, Deputy Chief T uh, Timmy McCormick, and those Bronx squads, that 5-2 squad and homicide squad, uh, really been attached to the hip throughout. Uh, the 5-2 um, public safety teams, a lot of the guns on the table, uh, they, they certainly played their part, really made the, the, the streets safe. Our DA, Ms. Clark, um, you dedicated your team's entire partnership. We can't thank you enough. Those homicide and violent crime uh, divisions, um, you mentioned Christine Scacia, 
and, and Morgan Dolan specifically have been an absolute godsend. Um, our coach and my personal mentor, Chief of Detectives, Jimmy Essick, and again, our team. We worked tirelessly at our mission and it enabled a, a, a successful outcome. But lastly, I just want to mention the community. This is why we all became cops. Let me repeat that. This is why we all became cops. You called, we answered, and...